Gospel of July the 18th, 2014, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus was going through a field of grain on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, See, your disciples are doing what is unlawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? How he went into the house of God and ate the bread of offering, which neither he nor his companions, but only the priests, would lawfully eat? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests serving in the temple violate the Sabbath and are innocent? I say to you, something greater than the temple is here. If you knew what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned these innocent men. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This beautiful gospel, we see how out of a human necessity arises a problem. The Lord is taking his disciples through a field of rain on the Sabbath. And as they are hungry, they are trying to tamper their hungriness with uh, with some heads of, of grain by eating on the planted, on the raw grain. How much could they have eaten? Not much, just a little bit. Just enough for them not to go belly empty, empty belly. But the Pharisees, who consider themselves to be pure and to be perfect, immediately saw them. Perhaps many of us would do the same. When we consider our law or our rules, our personal rules, either because we have taken them from the church or from somewhere else, from the law, when we consider that perfect and unique, then we might, const we might constitute ourselves in judges. And then we, it is easy to condemn many others who will not act according to our desires or to our own actions. And that's exactly what is happening with these Pharisees. See, your disciples are doing what's unlawful to do on the Sabbath. And the Lord rebukes them. Twice he says, have you not read? Of course, in the Torah, in the law. They were supposed to be experts on the law. And he as a master is teaching them that they are not. And he's saying, what David did when he and his companions were hungry, how they ate the bread of the offering in the house of God, and how the priests serving in the temple violate the Sabbath and are innocent. And then the Lord says something mysterious. Someone here is greater than the temple. He is hinting to them that they are in the presence of God, but because certainly they cannot realize that He is God, He appropriates Himself the title of the Son of Man that had been said by the prophet Daniel in the chapter 7 of his book, when while he was in a vision staring at God Almighty the Father, he suddenly sees someone like a Son of Man coming and received all power. The prophet is describing the Father and the Son, both of them God, the triune God. Now, the Lord says, if you knew what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned this innocent man. It seems to me that the Lord today is pointing out that greater than any law is mercy, that we should have mercy, especially with all our brothers. Not that the mercy would make a law useless, or not that the mercy would reject the law. We, none of us, could accept that anyone would harm a third person, and out of mercy we would let him harm him. That is not adequate. There is no such mercy. There is no mercy. That's foolishness and accomplishedness. 
But when we see someone who is doing something that only seems to be going against the law, without harming a third person, we have to be merciful. The Pharisees thought that by offering these great sacrifices and by observing very carefully the law, they would keep themselves pure, and they were mistaken. We have to see, we have to find and make mercy every day of our lives, for then, as merciful, as merciful people, we will find mercy with God. So it is not the sacrifice, but the mercy. Now, what is mercy? Mercy comes out of a loving heart, a heart that is righteous and loving, and that can be easily achieved when we make our conscience test, our conscience when we do our when we look for our conscience every day, our balance. And that has to be done in three lights and one cross. Three minutes to count the blessings of your day today, every day, just three minutes. Count the real blessings that you realize that God, that God has blessed you today. And you can put there ever since you opened up your eyes and you were able to breathe and you had life and you were able to move and you were on your bed and you had breakfast and hot water and everything else. The, all of those are blessings and the kiss from your son, and the kiss from your wife, or your, or your husband, and the sun, and the light, everything. And then just have one minute dedicated to see where you fail the Lord in the greatest. And another minute to reconcile with Him and ask Him to let us be a little bit less bad the next day. When you do that day in and day out, you realize how God is always blessing us regardless of our faults, because He loves us. In that sense, once you have felt the love of God, who is faithful, who is true and eternal, then you can start feeling the love for Him too. And out of that love that you might feel for God, love all His children, all our brothers. Then it will be very difficult to condemn anyone. Please, I make this warning. There is a difference between condemning someone and condemning his actions. An action could be a crime that needs to be corrected, but the person that did that crime never ceases to be a child of God, and he must not be condemned as a person. May the Lord bless all of us with His Holy Spirit and teaches His love to dwell in our hearts. God bless you all, brothers.